Hello everyone, welcome back. This is the third in our set of videos looking at solving systems of linear equations simultaneously. In our first video, we're looking at solving these equations by hand using linear algebra. In our second video, we were looking at using Excel Solver. And in the video today, we're going to be looking at how to solve these problems using the program Mathematica. So if this is your first time tuning in, Essentially what we're going to be doing is solving a mass balance and solving the sets of equations that we get for that mass balance simultaneously. And it's a multi-stage process. So if you don't want to go back and watch the first video where you go through some of these steps, you can pause the video here, see if you can solve it yourself, derive the equations that we're going to be adding to Mathematica, and then restart the program when you're ready. All right, so let's move over to our Mathematica notebook. So I've already started setting this up. So essentially what we have is we have that system, that six sets of equations, and we are going to <coughs> write those into our notebook. And I've started setting that up. So we have equation one, and this is just our first linear equation where our mass flow to stream three is equal to 60 kilograms per hour. And when we write that M3 is equal to, it has to be a double equal sign. So that's 60. Um, and then we can do this for each of our different uh, streams that we have. And so if, if you can actually move through this fairly quickly. And so I'm going to try to do this without talking too much about what I'm doing because um, we have these sets of equations previously. The last two equations are the ones that are a little bit different. So we have M2, the mass flow rate of stream 2 minus the mass flow rate of stream 1 is equal to 30 and then the mass flow rates of those, the A component in each of those streams, how they're related. And that's equal to 10 kilograms per hour. All right, so once we have those plugged in, now what we have to do is we have to tell Mathematica we want to solve these system of equations. So all you do is you type solve with a square bracket surrounded by a curly bracket, followed by a curly bracket, and then we write in the equation variable names. So we can do that very quickly, equation two, EQN3, EQN4, all the way through equation 6. All right. And then what we're going to do once that's set up is we're going to right click and click evaluate cell. And what it's going to do is it's going to evaluate the equations, which we don't really care about. What we care about is the part at the end where it tells us what the values are for each of our variables. So the first four, the, the stream 1 and the stream 3, values we already know pretty much from the equations what we're looking really looking for uh, the flow rate of stream 2 and the flow rate of component a in stream 2 and so we get 90 and 24 for each of those respectively which is exactly what we found in the previous two times we solved these equations so it matches so um, Mathematica is kind of fun because you can do this either by just plugging in the equations or you can also set this up to function as a matrix if you're comfortable doing that approach. So if you're not, you can stop the video here and say I'm done. Um, if you're interested in how to do this as a matrix, then keep following along. So um, we're going to do this in a, in a new tab, in a new um, equation sheet listed below. And what we're going to do is essentially take that matrix that we found in the first video and put that in to our Mathematica window. So to do that, we just type in our matrix as M equals, we put a curly bracket to define the outer boundary of our matrix, and then we put a curly bracket to define each row in our matrix. So if we go back up and we look at that first equation, I wonder if I can, there we go, I'll reduce that down. We don't need the outputs. What we're looking at is that first equation is really M3 is equal to 60. And so when we set up those variables, our first column is M1, which is 0. M2 is 0. M3 is our third. That has a coefficient equal to 1. Then 0, 0, 0, because the other variables aren't present. So you can essentially do this for all of the rows in your matrix. I'm going to cheat and essentially copy and paste the whole matrix in instead of making you watch me type it. So if we were to plug the whole thing in, what we end up with is M3 has a coefficient of 1, M3A has a coefficient of 1, M1, M1A, this is M2 minus M1, and then M2A minus M1. All right, so we have our initial matrix set up. Now we need to have the vector of uh, values on the right side of that equation input as well. So we're going to call that B 
and essentially we're going to do it the same way where the curly bracket represents the boundary of our vector and then we just put in the values so 66 60 14 30 and 10 and that ha these have to match the specific rows in our matrix so 60 has to correspond to equation one so you want to keep them in order all right next thing we want to do is add in our uh, variables and this just makes it a little bit easy I think this just makes it easier for us to uh, solve the problem and also it relates how uh, our matrix is related to vector B so we're just gonna plug in our variables so remember they're in the order that they're listed in our columns so it's m1 m2 m3 m1a m2a and m3a with a curly bracket and that's double equal sign to vector B so next what we're going to do is tell it to, that we want to solve percent curly brackets and then we're going to copy and paste all of those values for our variables telling it that's what we want to find our results for and then we need to tell it that we're solving a matrix so this is done using linear solve m comma b all right and then we just tell it we want to evaluate and then what it's going to do is basically Split, spit out the values that we put in, but it's also going to tell us what our values are for our different variables. So again, M2 is the one we care about, 90, and M2A is 24. So we get exactly the same thing. It'll also give it to us in vector format, shown here. So that is pretty much it. That's how you solve these equations in Mathematica. Um, I'm, I'll admit I'm not a Mathematica expert. I learned how to do this simply for this tutorial. So um, if you have other questions, I might not be the best person to ask. The, my preferred program for solving these is the program MATLAB, which is the last video in our series and the one I'm super excited about. So stay tuned for that and feel free to leave comments in the comment section.